everybody, I'm Dan Herring. Welcome back to my channel, Fish Dan 365 And do you know what day it is today? It's a very important day. It's Top Water Tuesday. We're doing everything we can to make Tuesdays way more tolerable than they would normally be by talking about top water baits. Today, we've got a good one for you. We're going to talk about how to doctor your fluke and soft plastic jerk baits to get more bites. It's going to be an interesting one. Come along and take a look. So we've got these fluke style baits, soft jerk baits of all different types and kinds, little little ones, big ones, and I like to do some things with some of these markers and dipping guy and uh, exacto blades and scissors just to try and make my bait look a little bit different and stand out among the rest. So that's what today's video is going to be all about. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the angle of this camera so that you're looking over my shoulder so you can see what I'm doing to make these baits look a little bit different and look a little more attractive to the fish. Does it make a difference in fishing? Well, my statistics tell me personally that it does. I kept a database for many years, probably over a period of 30 or 40 years. I kept notes on, a, in, on paper. I transferred them to a access database. Later, I put it onto an Excel spreadsheet. And I made a video about that. I'll put, it, I'll put the link up here so that you can take a look at it. But my statistically speaking, my data suggested that I caught more fish per hour when I did these kind of modifications on my, on my baits. And the way that I did that was I would record what I was fishing with, how long I was fishing with it, and whether or not I had it doctored or not. And so by looking at that data, I can see what my fish catch rate is. Now, there's a lot of other factors involved. I understand that time of year, season, lake that you're fishing, all those things. But in general, it did seem to me that by changing these baits, by doctoring them up a little bit, it did seem to get more bites. And perhaps more importantly than any of that is, if you think it does here, if it gives you more confidence here, then you're gonna catch more fish on them. Because fishing is really a confidence game and a momentum game. If you believe in what you're doing, and you believe it's gonna catch fish and you start catching fish, well, there's your confidence and then you get momentum. And that's just how fishing works. It's, just, it's a, an interesting sport that way. It's not just me saying that. You can talk to a lot of other people with a lot of other fishing experience. They'll tell you that that experience is the same for them as well. So let's get started. We'll get this camera angle changed and we'll show you what, what we got going here. Okay, so you can see here in front of me, I have a number of uh, baits. I have some different pens and, and markers. I got some decals in here. I got a, a little exacto blade without the handle, but that's okay, and, and the scissors. So there's a lot of things that you can do with these baits. I'm going to start with this little guy first. This is a Damiki Armor Shad. And one of the things I like to do is get a red marker and just paint red gills on these things. So, and I just find where the gill marker is on the bait. I usually put it underneath as well and then I turn it around and oftentimes I'll put it right over the top of it as well. So I just made a little bit of, uh, of red here. So there's my gills and then another thing I like to do on the armor shed is use the dip and glow. So we'll open this up. And I just like to dip the tails, just the, just the tips of the tails, into this chartreuse. So I'll show you that in a minute. There you go. Hopefully you can see that. That chartreuse color is just on the tips of the tails. It just gives a little bit more lively look to the bait. It makes it look more like a, a living critter uh, or a living fish with those added colors. And there you can see the, the end result. So that's something that I like to do. Oftentimes I'll dip the, the tail in chartreuse and that seems to, to do uh, well for me. So there's the finished look on that particular bait. Now this is a small bait. I can nose hook it and this will catch you a lot of small mouths. So that's one, of the, one way you can do a modification. I, I also like to use these decals. 
And I've got all kinds of stuff in here. I've got fish eyes, and I've got something that looks like scales. Look at how shiny this is. And so what I'll do sometimes is I will cut some of these out, and I already did it on this bait, so I will show you what it looks like in the bait. We're gonna show you about these eyes in a minute too. Put this back. Now, the eyes, I like to use large eyes when I can, but sometimes the eyes are too big, and I left my small eyes in the, uh, in the boathouse. Otherwise, I put little eyes on this guy as well, because uh, that just adds to the lifelikeness of the bait. Well, one of the things I like to do with those decals is put it on the side of the bait like this. And hopefully you can see how that captures the light and shines when you hit different angles. It looks like scales. And so I'll put another one on this side as well. And again, I like to add the red gill effect on these flukes. So I would put just a bit of a red gill here, crossed, back up this way. So you got this red gill effect. I might dip this tail in chartreuse and I would put another decal on that side. And that way I've got a little bit of a different look to the flute. Now you might be wondering, well, how well that will that decal stay on? And it depends on the quality of the decal. Some stay on very well, but when you don't think they will, or when you don't have confidence that they will, that's when I use this super glue. So this is called Loctite Ultra Gel Super Glue. Stuff works really good. I use it on the eyes. You could put it, you could put it on the bait and stick the decal to it. You can even glue the decal around the edges onto the bait as well. And so that'll really make it look nice. So that's another nice little trick that I, I like to do with my flukes at times, especially on those sunny days, is to get that bait fish scale effect, that little shine where uh, it just looks a little bit different, looks a little more real perhaps to the fish. Now, if you watch Intuitive Angling, Randy Blockcat's Intuitive Angling, he always shows something that he does with his soft plastic baits. And what he likes to do is take them and rough them up like this. And what he's doing, he's breaking up the salt content in the bait and he's just making the bait uh, a little bit roughed up. Now he thinks that makes the bait look more natural. And in many cases, I think he's right. But there's another thing that it does. It, it makes the bait actually look a little more beat up than it normally would look. And I think that makes a difference too. You guys probably have noticed this in your own fishing. You catch a fish on a soft plastic bait, it starts getting a little, some marks on it, some grooves in it from the fish's teeth, some wear and tear, and it seems to catch fish better after that. I've had that happen many times with flukes and with beavers, especially. And so, but there's another reason to rough the bait up. And that is when you use a marker after you've roughed the bait up some, it tends to stay on the bait better. It doesn't come off the bait so well, so so easily. So now we just rough this guy up and you can see what that's done was it's released some of the, the, the yellow coloration throughout the bait a little differently. And this is a baby bass color, right? This is supposed to be baby bass. If you want to make it more like a baby bass, well, then you can take a black marker like this and just paint a lateral line right down the side of it. And I'll go right down to the tail. And we'll do the same on the other side. Just paint a black lateral line. Now this marker is wearing out a little bit, unfortunately. And I think I brought some more just in case that was gonna happen. Now this one's a little thicker. Hopefully I, it doesn't get too big. Oh, that's better. Oh yeah, that's much better. All right. I might have messed that up a little bit, but you'll get the idea on the drawing of this. Let me put it on here too. I just have to have a bit of a steadier hand perhaps. So now we've, we've put that black line on it. it. Makes it look more like a bass. If that's what you want it to look like. And so there's our, uh, there's our, our bass line. Now we can draw that line back down at the tail if we want, or we can chartreuse the tail, or sometimes these bass have black tips on their tails. So you can do that as well. Let me show you what that looks like. We'll just paint this tail. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Black, the tips of it black on both sides. There we go. 
And now we've got that uh, that tail tipped black as well. Pretty cool. And what I would do with this one is maybe add some red gills, and I would like I'd put eyes on it. Now this fluke's a little narrow here. My eyes are a little big. You can try and cut them down, but it's better just to get smaller eyes. And you can always use this same super glue to keep the eyes on, because the eyes do tend to come off a little easier. But with some super glue around the edge of the eye and in the middle, it ain't coming off. It stays on there pretty good. The other thing that you can get is 3D eyes, and these eyes that'll stick out a little bit and glue them onto the bait. I don't find that necessary. I think the I think it it looks like eyes on the bait just with this, but you could always choose to use some 3D eyes too. You can get those at a uh, I think you can get those at like a Jan's Netcraft tackle supply place, or even at a hobby shop uh, has those kind of things as well. So here's our little baby bass with our lateral line. Let's put the, we'll, we'll see if we can put these eyes on here just so you get an idea for how this would look. It really does add a lot to the bait when you have the eyes on it. So we're gonna put an eye right here. And we'll add another one to the other side, right there. Press them down with our fingers. And now you can see this thing is looking back at you. And so, uh, you know, this one, these eyes are a little big, so they're hanging off. So I would use smaller eyes, but I could also glue those on there, and they're going to stay on there just fine. Just have to glue them with this gel-type glue. This stuff works really good. So there's our, our baby bass. Makes the fluke look completely different than when it than when we started. And you can actually, you know, if you feel that that's too much of a ladder line, you can just kind of rough that up and make that a bit more faded as well. But uh, I'm sure this bait will catch a lot of fish, both without this modification, but with it as well. So that's our baby bass mod. Now here I've got an old uh, but good soft plastic jerk bait, the Sluggo. And I really like the Sluggo because it has a really, because of the way it's shaped, it's got a really good darting action in the water. It actually has a more consistent walk the dog than, than, uh, than the fluke style baits do. And so these things still catch a lot of fish. And I hardly ever see a perch color fluke or soft plastic uh, jerk bait that meets my expectations, what I would like to see. So I found a way to make a perch colored fluke, sluggo, doesn't matter what it is, but what does help is to start with what they call the Arkansas Shiner color. So this is Arkansas Shiner, and we're gonna show you how we make this look more like a perch for when I wanna fish a perch. Now there are perch patterns out there, but I don't think they look as good of, as a perch as what I'm gonna show you here in a few minutes. So the first thing I'm gonna do is Perch have those vertical bars, right? So we're going to put some black vertical bars on an angle on this bait, just evenly spaced all the way down to about there, up over the back. And that's how we're going to start it out with the bars. And then we're going to turn it around. We're going to do the same thing. Bars on that same angle don't have to be in the same spot. It's not that important. You just want to have those vertical bars on the bait. So now we got these bars. Already looks more like a perch, doesn't it? Just having those bars on there. I'm going to put one more on the front end here. Now we're going to add orange. This is the this is the part that really makes it look like a perch. I like to put orange on the belly area here in the front of the bait and I like to make some more orange down in here just kind of throw some orange here and there just a splash of it here and there you don't need a lot there we go and then uh, I'm gonna paint the tail orange as well and then we're gonna try something with the tail and we'll see how that looks so I got the tail orange now I could put a little red on the, where the gills would be. So we'll paint a red gill. So there's our red gills with our orange on the bait. We could put our eyes on there. Put an 
eye on this side, an eye on the other. Get those on there good. Now we've got our eyes on the bait. We got our perch color. And I'm gonna split the tail. Let's see how that looks. So we're gonna split it. I'm gonna use our scissors and see how that works. So we're gonna split it. Hopefully we'll get this right. Yeah. A little bit more. And maybe use our blade to get a little further up in there. And then in order to keep it split, we have to rip out some of that plastic. So now we got the perch with the split tail, but in the right direction. So it just gives a little bit more realistic action. And if you split it a little further up, that will become more noticeable as a tail. Especially if we can get some of the be careful not to cut my thumb off doing this. Some of that plastic out of the middle of it. There we go. Yeah, show you this in a minute. All right, now we've got that split tail and our perch pattern. And as you use it, it actually looks more and more like a perch because the orange starts to fade in with the black and, and it just looks better, more and more like a perch. This is actually a longer bait. It doesn't really have the same shape as this does. But you can see we've made a whole different looking bait out of it, more of a perch pattern. You can use dark green for this as well. That's our, our perch. And here's a shad bait. This is a, sh a shad colored bait. And one of the things I like to do with the shad colored bait is add the black dot that you'll often see on a lot of our shad species. So all I'm doing here is adding that black dot about where it should be anatomically. And I might rough that guy up first before I do that. Same with that perch. But there I, I put the black dot. I might put red gills and some eyes on this and maybe tip the tail in chartreuse. And I'm ready to go with this guy as well. This is another one that we can make two things out of. I'm not sure what this color is called. I'll, uh, I'll put it up here. I'll put it up in the in the comments in the video in the description of the video sorry now this one we can make this one has like a golden shiner look to it so we can we can try and make it look more like a golden shiner or we can add that I'm gonna rough this one up and see how that looks first and we can also make this into a perch color as well so it's got a lot of the right characteristics for a perchy look to it if we do the right things. So let's rough this up a little bit and we'll see how it shakes out here. You gotta rough it up all the way from front to back as best we can. Try and break up the salt content in there, twist it, rip it, not rip it, but you get the idea. Stretch it out a little bit, rough it up with our fingers. There we go. So now, oh, another thing I forgot to show you on this one, what I like to do sometimes is take a chartreuse pen and add a little chartreuse just down the, the side here just a little bit of chartreuse just to give that little bit doesn't need much just behind that black dot and then we'll do the same on this side just right around that where the lateral line of the fish would be just to give it a little bit of that chartreuse look and now what that does is just it just tends to show up a little bit in the water. It's very subtle, but it can be very effective. Again, I didn't rough this one up so much, but you can see that has that shad look to it, especially if you have threadfin shad in your, your waters. They have that little bit of chartreuse to them. Let me put a little more on this one so you can see it a little better. Didn't get on there real well. Marker, marker's wearing out. There we go. So there's, there's our chartreuse addition to make this look more like a shad. Now let's go back to the bait we had here. And we'll, we can make this look like a golden shiner 
which they call a roach, or we can make it look like a perch. Let's make it look like a perch. I'm gonna add these black ribs, or not ribs, but lines. So you can see we've got this thing already looking like a, a nice perch profile. And then we'll put orange on this tail. So we'll make that tail orange. I'm gonna make the belly orange on this guy. See what I'm doing here? Just painting the belly. And then just slightly here. There we go. A little bit more. A little more here. That's it. Maybe a little red on the gills here. And there's our perch fluke. So a nice looking, uh, or it could be, you know, you can make this into a bluegill too. I've got blue markers and, you know, a bait like the one that we turned into the baby bass, you can make into a bluegill too, just by using that marker that way. But here you can see what I did with the, with the marker on this color. And if you do that with Arkansas Shiner, it looks even more like a perch because it's got more green in here. But again, it looks like a bait fish. You got that orange tail for additional attraction. You're not going to find a fluke like that out of the package. So this is why I do what I do with these baits. It just gives it a different look. And here are several different things to think about for when you're fishing your flukes and your soft plastic jerk baits. Well, what did you think of some of these modifications? I hope you liked them and got something out of them. I'd love to hear from you, your comments on what you thought and what kind of modifications you might do on your flukes and how that might apply to other baits as well. Because this doesn't have to be just about flukes. It can be modifying other soft plastic baits as well, which I absolutely do. I know I've showed you videos about what I do with a, with a sweet beaver, for example, when I want it to look more like a bluegill. So same kind of idea there. You can use these markers and some of these techniques to make it look a little bit more like the real thing and to get those fish to bite. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give me that thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next time. Be safe out there. And as always, may God bless your fishing endeavors.